Hello everybody and welcome to part three of the mail call for December of 2018 in January of 2019. And as you already know, it was a real watershed month with uh, polishing up real life streaming out there, having uh, Las Vegas, Reno. It was really a power packed month and of course uh, Christmas Eve at the boss and Janet. So let's get on to part three of the mail call here. Um, let's see. This is kind of interesting. Why do you and Elvis insist on calling people by letters like Mr. X, like Mr. Y, and now we have the mysterious Mr. Z? Why do we have so much mystery? Don't these people have first names? <laughs> I think it's kind of... Uh, Let's just say now it might be a tradition. Let's also say that uh, we've learned on the Boyd that protecting people's true identity is not the worst thing in the world. And even though Mr. Mr. Z is a cool guy and everybody agreed, he was an excellent addition for Las Vegas in 2018. We always try, at least I do, try to be a little protective of identities and uh, Mr. Z is someone that you'll certainly see in the uh, future uh, future trips to Las Vegas. He's in, He really enjoys the uh, channel here. He's a really awesome guy but I want him to just be able to enjoy his life and plus let's just say adding a little bit of mystery to YouTube is not the worst thing in the world. Uh, why did your party dress, I had my gold sparkly party dress on for Vegas get so short, did you shorten it on purpose, your butt was hanging out, no I didn't shorten it on purpose, I had bought that uh, I think four years ago and I'd gone with Missy Jen to the alteration shop to get that uh, altered, obviously my figure changed some over that time, particularly when I had my uh, uh, butt lift in March of 2017, the fact that my butt now sticks out a little bit in the back made that dress kind of rise up a little higher than it did uh, initially. <laughs> I don't think there's a lot to let out either on the dress. So I'm a little worried the second time through um, what the result's going to be. That might be the death knell for... <laughs> For that particular dress okay uh, are there any you know with the new year are there any tips for getting in shape like one tip one tip I would have to people is don't don't stress so many people look at themselves in the mirror they look at their weight and they throw up their hands and they say you know it's just it's it's impossible you know I weigh 250 pounds I used to weigh 170 pounds I'll never get back to that weight. So they give up before they even begin. And the thing that I would encourage people is to get up and start getting active. Because getting active against what you're doing now and the food that you're consuming, it will keep you from getting heavier. And if you can just maybe cut out one meal a day and not compensate by eating other larger meals during the day, you can progressively take the weight off the same way you put it on, right? We don't go from 170 to 250 overnight. It's a slow progression over time. It's triggered by sometimes health reasons, uh, inability to have mobility and things like that. You have to have something to be active. Okay, so set yourself to do something interesting like starting to take walks. And you only need to walk down to the corner the first time and then walk back and just lengthen that by lengthen that by one block every day and you're gonna see the world in an entirely different way when you drive the world goes by so fast you don't even process it and when you're on foot the things that you see are amazing when you slow down and you see all the depth and all the cool stuff and all some of the ugly stuff too there on planet Earth, but it makes it a much richer experience. So get moving. Um, 
This is one I hear a lot. Do you care that all of your live streams are just total shit shows? What's the point of the chaos? I guess this person's particularly talking about uh, when I have panel chats. And I like to have open chats where everybody's welcome. But I can't always guarantee that people survive the panel. You know, people have discovered, other people in the panel have discovered that they can remove uh, participants from the panel. And yeah, sometimes for me it's extremely frustrating. I do believe that the uh, host or hostess should have the prerogative to remove guests, but you know, you have to, you have to roll, you have to go with what you got. And, you know, those who got you there. So I always favor those who got me there and, uh, and their wishes. But I always try to have an inclusive and open panel. Yeah, they're crazy. They're insane. A lot of times, uh, you know, it's cringe video and everything else, but it is what it is. I don't doctor stuff or, uh, on YouTube and I stand by my live streams. Look at how many other people do live streams and then they can't wait to push the delete or push the hide button after the live stream's over. Me, I like to have the content out there to show, you know, the real YouTube, the real Rosie. Let the shit shows continue. Um, let's see, why don't you, here's an interesting, why, Rosie, why don't you do pedal pumping and stocking videos anymore, leg shows? Remember, I originally subbed for all that stuff. People, people move on. I occasionally do uh, those kind of videos, but um, you know, let's face it, I'm in bikinis a lot, and you know, there's not much, you know, that people don't. There's very little left to the imagination on my channel, and I just feel like. That's where I want to be right now, uh, doing that, trying to get myself into the ultimate shape with the ultimate figure that I can going forward. Will I do some things like that in the future? Yeah, I've done videos set to legs, the ZZ Top, and some other things. You can look down in the uh, on my channel, the main page, and you can see uh, sexy and teasing videos, and you can enjoy some of them. Yes, there'll be more uh, to come. But, uh, you know, for right now, I like the way that uh, there's been much less, there's been more outside um, streaming and things that I'm really enjoying super, a uh, real whole heck of a lot, and a diminishment of inside and just having bikinis in every video. And, uh, yeah, it's fun once in a while, once or twice a week, but, you know, you got to move on in life. Um... Where did you find Mr. Z? Where do you find all these characters on, on YouTube? They're great. This person says it's just so random. These people just pop up. <laughs> these people just pop up on your channel. Isn't it cool? Huh? I got a lot of subscribers on my channel. It's not a big channel, but it's a fun channel. And I get a lot of people that tell me when you're coming through town, don't worry about being at a hotel, Rosie. Don't worry about if you got your RV, you can park it on my driveway, and we would be real psyched to host. I mean, isn't that isn't that amazing? And Mr. Z is just one of those persons, and Mr. Z's family. They're wonderful. You know, I didn't put Mr. Z's family on uh, video, but Mr. Z enjoys um, meeting the Rosie girl and Missy Jen and being out there. And I really like that, you know, that people are willing to be out there and uh, hanging out with us and doing doing crazy stuff. It's not for everybody. But what makes it so special is that people open their hearts to Missy Jen and I. And when I go traveling in 2019 in particular, you know, the kindness they show and the, the, the number of people. And then when I'm on the road, people will know where I'm going and they'll be able to intercept by emailing me. And be able to say, you know, I want to meet you, or you can plug in on the driveway, or love to uh, love to uh, have a cup of coffee or a meal with you. That stuff is great. You're not necessarily going to see them on camera because I'm not the kind of person that puts people on camera unless they enjoy being on camera. And let's face it, Mr. Z is a great ham. Okay, he's perfect you know, out there on the ghetto uh, ghetto tours and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> on YouTube. Uh, let's see. Here's the last question for the month. Why do you take tips on your channel? 
In my opinion, it's really e-begging, isn't it? Well, in my, in my opinion, it's not. Because I'm not asking, neither is Missy Jen, we're not asking people to support us and to support our daily living. I've worked for 46 years. Yes, December was a very stressful uh, month with me. I'm now moving into uh, full-fledged retirement for uh, early in 2019. I don't, I don't have the flow that I used to have and the finances. That, that's, that'll be gone. But what I'm saying is I don't ask anybody for anything because I'm very proud and I've always been Missy Jen and I to be self-sustaining and uh, taking care of ourselves. And uh, never ask people for GoFundMes, never ask people. And we've been givers too. We've done a lot to help out people on, uh, on YouTube. And I'm very proud of that. So sometimes it creates a little bit of a stress. But as far as e-tipping is concerned, that's a totally different thing. You never hear me on the stream ask somebody, donate now. Or it says if you want, if you feel like you're enjoying the content and you feel like giving a tip, here's how you can do it. And, of course, the uh, Streamlabs is the preferred way because they don't take the uh, 28% or 22% off the top. It's a nice thing. But you're never going to hear us be ungrateful or come on there and ask people to give and give and give and uh, collect taxes. That's nonsense, okay? In my opinion, giving a tip, say here's a cup of coffee, girls, buy yourself a burger. We're putting the content out. We're out there on the streets. We're going to the festivals. We're going to the fairs. We're going to the parades, the winter festivals. The, um, all the different shows and activities, the flea markets, all that stuff that you enjoy. There's a lot of people on these channels that are disabled and don't have the ability to get out and see the world. And I'm proud to be their eyes and to be their gateway to everyday life on the streets. That's exciting to me. So I feel like if people want a tip for that content, and there's an expense associated with bringing that to as opposed to being at home and sitting in front of the camp and running a show, which I enjoy many of my friends do, and I love them. But especially for 2019, there's a significant expense for bringing tip, for continuing to work on quality to bring great streams and to travel and bring great streams. You know, January is going to be a low month with getting my butt filled for the second time. So, you know, I'll be a little antsy. I'll be out there doing that kind of stuff because I really can't sit on my butt. But I really think, <clears throat> I really believe at the end of the day, if you don't think that there's a difference between e-begging and e-tipping, then I would tell you it's because you don't want to see the difference because that's your mind is already made up about anybody that gives anybody a dime on YouTube. It's a negative thing, and you know what? You can have that thought if you want to, but I choose to look at it, and many other people do look at it in a totally different way. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. And don't forget, too, when they're doing that, they're also involving themselves in the stream by having their message, if they choose to type one, broadcast so everybody hears. You get the text-to-speech, the TTS, which I think makes it pretty wild at times to have that uh, <laughs> on the stream. Okay? It's a lot of fun. All right, thanks for watching, everybody, and onward with... January 2019.